I'm just taking a look at the audience so that I can wake up anybody who's sleeping. OK, I think everyone's up. All right, first and foremost, this is not the starting of my presentation, but I'd like to thank the organizers. I think it's a really good show. It's a really good lineup of uh, keynotes that I experienced today. And uh, it's been a pleasure so far. So thank you so much. Uh, so I'm going to start with a small poem. It's in Hindi. And uh, I will explain what it means. But it's the essence of the presentation today. Tu shaheen hai, parwaaz hai kaam tera, tere saamne asma aur bhi hai. What this means is that you are the great falcon. You have many skies to conquer. Keep dreaming, keep flying. In the next few minutes that I have, I will be talking to you about some of the people that keep dreaming or have dreamt and have not stopped doing that, starting with my own story. So I'm Surbi, uh, born and brought up in India. Uh, you can tell with my name and probably with my hair and my face. Um, and uh, I started, I spent 23 years of my life in India, and I studied there. I worked with a telco as a Java developer, so I come from an engineering background. And uh, having lived in India and have seen Indian consumers, and it makes me proud also, it's uh, quite a different place from Finland, because it's less crowded than when I go home now. So my patience level has really gone down when I go back home, because uh, Finland is less crowded. But also, India is one of the top 10 consumers in the world right now. And it is one of the biggest industries when it comes to um, e-commerce, because of the companies, if you've heard of Flipkart, Amazon, of course, it has been mentioned a lot. Uh, in the day to day, and uh, also the fact uh, one of the facts I would like to place here is that Jeff Bezos was in India a few weeks back, and what he tried to do is, of course, try to figure out how they can increase the ROI in a market like India, and also uh, they signed a deal with one of the biggest companies in India, which is called the Future Retail uh, Forum. And they basically own some of the biggest retail chains. So you can imagine the K supermarkets, K markets here. They're, they're going to sign a deal. They already signed a deal with them. And these stores are called Big Bazaar in India. And what they're trying to do is bring together online and offline. So this is, while I don't work in India, but it has shaped quite a lot of things because I am closer to the country. I learn a lot around e-commerce from there and retail. Then I moved to Singapore. So for over six years, I was in Singapore, went for my master's, worked with some of the greatest companies. I don't call them great because they were big companies. They were really small companies, mostly startups. But I worked with some great people. They are now my mentors, and I feel that they have shaped me quite a lot. And being in Singapore, I was closer to the Asian market of China, Philippines, Vietnam, and just to name a few. And it was mostly around e-commerce, ad tech, and entertainment. But Asia is moving much faster. And why is that? And the reason I feel, and also I think a lot of reports show, is that the West has these legacy systems, which is very difficult to outbreak now, while Asia is starting new. There are no concepts of department stores, big malls. It started but it's not going great there already. But the system is not too old. And that is where Asia is intentionally becoming a disruptor when it comes to the retail space. And while in countries like Europe or US, it's, it's harder to break what already exists and then start something new. That's why countries like China are doing so well when it comes to some of the biggest retail events. And one thing to mention also here, uh, I'll tell you uh, what product I'm working on in Zalando in a few minutes. But when back in Singapore, it was so easy to launch like a same day or an X-ray product. Like, because there is a big delivery fleet, there are so many people, there are smaller islands, 
Only Philippines was difficult because of the monopoly of some of the carriers, but overall, the placing such products was much easier than when you come to Europe. So the challenge completely changes. Then Finland happened to me. It's been 11 months, and I'm really, really sad about the winters. I thought there would be snow. <laughs> so, and I would say the reason I moved to Finland is because my husband was the more, more adventurous one. He loves snow. If, you, if I look at his childhood pictures, he was always on the snow. In India, yes, we do get snow on the no north side, so people tend to travel to the northern countries um, and uh, northern states, and then they just enjoy there. And I used to ask uh, my husband's mother, why do you question his decision of going to Finland? It's so obvious. So yeah, so that's how Finland happened. And uh, Europe is unique. Many markets, many languages, many cultures. Serving digitally savvy customers means continuous innovation. You guys have had the experience of having internet long back and the data rates, etc. It doesn't matter. But in countries like Singapore, uh, India, Philippines, Vietnam, it's very different. So even to keep you guys motivated or in uh, invested in the proposition that a company has is a very big challenge and an opportunity. And in fin with Finland, Zalando happened to me. I was working with Zalora. It sounds very similar to Zalando. It's because it was the same parent company ro of Rocket Internet in Singapore. But uh, what, uh, why Zalando was also special for me is because some of the guys from Zalando used to come to Singapore. The company did not have any connections per se on the PNL, etc. But just as like sharing projects, etc. And it was quite interesting, the same proposition that I mentioned just now, that Europe is different than uh, Asia. And the case studies that we built together ended up adding so much value to the overall e-commerce across the world. It could be in any, in any part, Asia or Europe. And the story of Zalando is super special. I have not been there for long, but uh, I think it still uh, resonates with me quite a lot because this is where the first dreamers I saw. Like when I joined the company, I, I was lucky enough to meet the founders very soon. And uh, when I read the story of how Zalando was started, it wasn't the best time. Lehman Brothers just went insolvent. And uh, there was the financial crisis in 2008. But well, these people had some uh, strong motivation, I would say. At first, it was a small team. Everybody was doing everything. They even had to bring the parcels to the post office. But now, this is Zalando at a glance. It's the biggest company I've ever worked for. I'm not saying it's the biggest in the Europe but it was still placed as number four uh, in Europe, or I think in Germany, uh, to work for. Like, it's a great environment. And uh, I was super motivated with these numbers, but I also felt that joining this big of a company, will I ever be heard? Will I ever make an impact? Because, well, I loved to talk to the business guys, management people, and understand what is the company strategy. But overall, Zalando has done a great job so far in trickling down the strategy from a big company to the people down under who are working in the company. And sometimes you need to big, uh, jump into a bigger pond. Big fish in a small pond can be a, you know, less of a challenge. Having talked about the online retail dream, retail is not just about online. Zalando is doing great, Amazon is doing great, but when you talk about retail, it's not just e-commerce, it's not just online. But online retail, even though growing at a fast pace, is a small part of retail, and retail field consists of many different segments. Could be supermarkets, department stores, franchises, you name it, there are so many different aspects of retail. And not talking about online, though I work in Zalando, I would want to touch on another dream. Meet John McFitters. He is the founder of Stadium Goods. 
Some of the team members of Connected Retail team, the team I work in for Zalando, met him in New York. And uh, basically, what Stadium Goods does is that it's a sneaker reseller. They basically buy sneakers from consumers and sell them to consumers. It's a store, 400 square meter space. My VP was there and he asked John, hey John, so how much do you do? Like, like how, does, how does your business look like? Could any of you guess what he said? How many sneakers would he sell? Maybe in a day, in a month? Can you guess? <laughs> he said 40 million in an year. He started with 40, and my baby was like, oh, 40 shoes, that's great. And he said, um, no, it's 40 million in an year. He was invited to a small event which Zalando hosts. It's called the Bread and Butter Show. And um, their question was asked again. So how's it going? How's everything? Uh, what are the learnings so far? He said, it's been going good. It's been 120 million now in a year, so not bad, it's pretty good. And after that, he shared the stage with Alibaba last year, 2019, on their singles day, representing the states. And he made 200 million in a day on the singles day with Alibaba. It's massive, it's, it's crazy. And I don't know if uh, any of you followed the figures, but Alibaba in total did uh, 38 billion on a single day. Well, it's China, and the consumer market is huge there. But do you think that the 38 billion that they did in a single day would have been possible with just their few fulfillment uh, units? A fulfillment unit is nothing but like a big warehouse. That's what we call in e-commerce. The answer is no. They connect offline stores and many stores like the one from, uh, that is run by John. And that is how they increase the network of selling to the consumer. So connectivity is a way to speed up the growth and reach every consumer that you have in the market. What we are doing at Zalando is that we are looking at these four main pillars. Zalando, the store, which is the brick and mortar offline store. Brand, in the sense that there are companies who are putting out stores there, they think, oh, this area, this mall would do great. This is, an, this is the footfall this store will get. So there are brands. And the most important, I don't think I need to put more weight because all the presentations before uh, me were all around how customer experience is the most important. So you have to make a journey. You have to start with the customer. Otherwise, you will definitely fail. Zalando estimate it loses 20 to 30 million articles because of the out-of-stock problem, which means you come on Zalando, you're looking for a white, crisp shirt, and, uh, well, on the product detail page, you find it's out-of-stock. So we lose a lot on uh, such out-of-stock issues. And imagine an average basket size of say, 50 euros, it almost translates to 1 billion euros in lost sales. And talking about stores in retail, they are facing a decline in the footfall because, of course, e-commerce is coming in. People are getting better recommendations, better suggestions. Why wouldn't I shop online? Brand, they are, their ROI is reducing because well, it ties to how the brands get the footfall. And in the end, customer, of course, they want more. 
Again, don't want to put a lot of weight there. There was a great presentation before me which emphasized that how customer wants or the consumer wants so much. And if you look at these four parties together, an e-commerce, an uh, brick and mortar store, and end customer, you'd say, eh, it's the same usual multi-channel, now previously called multi-channel, now called omni-channel solution. But we'd like to call it O2O, which means it doesn't matter it's online to offline or offline to online. It's how you read it. If you're from offline retail, you would read it as offline to online. If you're from online, then you would maybe read it the other way around. And that's where we started building a tool which is called the Connected Retail Tool. Via Connected Retail, our partners can connect store stock from their offline stores with our online platform. Orders can then be shipped direct from, uh, from the stores, and consumers get them from the stores. And also, if you want to make a return, the return would go to the store. Connected retail has driven store productivity for participating retailers quite significantly. We have connected a lot of stores in Germany and in Netherlands, and we wish to expand quite fast in other countries. You, as a shopper, come onto Zalando website. You are strolling for a nice red dress, and then uh, you land on the product detail page. You figure out, hey, it's being sold by this store next to Kampi Mall, or in the Kampi Mall, let's just say. OK, great. And there is this sustainability factor also. A red dress is traveling not 200 kilometers from a warehouse in, I know, Erfurt, versus five kilometers from Kampi. So there's a sustainability aspect to it, which adds a lot of value. And then many other business cases of helping the brand and the stores to increase their footfall by return in store, click and collect, et cetera. And this is just the start of innovation. At Zalando, there is this principle. You don't need to think about the challenges you have to, or the problems. You have to think about the opportunities. That's where we want to come together, work in a partnership model with the whole of retail to build an experience for the end consumer where you can use online data, help offline, and the same offline data to help online. The research has shown, and I think it's, it's, I think it's a very old research. When I joined Zalando, they told me this is a research, and I'm like, guys, we already know this. Amazon customers are very happy when they receive the package on the same day, so we don't really need to talk about it, but yes, I would still iterate this because this is the principle of what connected retail has also been set up on, that the net promoter score increases quite significantly if you receive your package faster, of course, with proper communication. But I also feel, like I think after we moved to Finland, it really dep depends on the geographies also. Like, Finland is 100% pickup stations, while Germany is 8 to 10% pickup and mostly our house home deliveries. So it depends. I don't like that I have to come home early just to you know, pick up a, uh, that I have to wait for a package. Maybe I have a spontaneous plan to go out for drinks with my friends. I'd rather pick it up on my own convenience from a pickup station. So it depends. But overall, research definitely shows this, that faster deliveries really helps improve the net promoter score in e-commerce. And what we have done with Connected Retail is we are fine-tuning the algorithms and figuring out how we can provide you the orders or the article that you're looking for from the nearest possible store, or a fulfillment center in this case could be, so that it's, it doesn't have to travel too long. It's more, there, I think it requires further research when we call it more sustainable, but Definitely, it's about having to say that it reignites not only 
the net promoter score or improve those KPIs, but also reignites the local business. I will be very proud that if I hear that, hey, the store, uh, mom and pop store next to, again, uh, let's just say Forum Mall, not Campy Mall this time, <laughs> Forum Mall uh, is selling with Zalando. And, well, it's not a very big brand, but come on, it's still, I'm super proud of it that it's in Finland. I have four minutes, but let's see how far we go. I would leave you with this word, silta. I hope I pronounced it right. It's called the bridge in Finnish language. This is what my tech team is called at Zalando. And when I was interviewing with Zalando, it really touched me. Because having worked in e-commerce, I knew, well, we are the sharks. We want to not work with maybe uh, the offline retail, but that is not the case. We want to build a partnership model, a two-way street, and that's why it's called Silta. The bridge signifies that we want to partner and build a journey for the consumer, which regardless of online or offline, adds value to them. That's it. Thank you very much.